Something that's very interesting nowadays uh, for investors, there's different types of investors. There's active investors and then there's uh, passive investors or people who make uh, money off of active uh, cash flow versus passive and speculative type assets. So what we're seeing a lot nowadays is we're seeing a lot of people from the housing market being cyclical to even Bitcoin where there's not necessarily intrinsic value. And those are assets, but they're also to a degree their liabilities as well as Robert Kiyosaki would say. Um, the house that you live in would be more of an asset the more you rent out the rooms and make money with Airbnb, for example. Um, if you are able to create cash flow off of the asset, then it's not such a passive asset anymore, right? You've got a higher utility value. You've optimized the use of that asset. But the reason I bring this up and what's really important right now is what you're seeing is if you, if you see something lose money, like if you see an asset or you see something lose 50% of its value, you have to actually increase 100% just to break even. And what we've seen through the asset class of the housing market is that it actually took 10 years to recover and a full decade to get back to even, right? So that's why it's really important that you have to look at the liability, what's really a liability or an asset, and is it prone to the cycle of the markets? And can you just lose 50% overnight? I would argue that working capital and cash flow uh, actually is not like multiple income streams is not going to likely lose 50% overnight of its profit margins, utility value, the strength and relationships that you have with it, a lifetime value of a customer and so forth. Um, I think it's just a lot more solidified and I don't think that's just going to go down 50% overnight. So it's something to keep in mind, even though there's some easy money out there, speculative money on some of this stuff out there. At some point, the compounding does stop. Sometimes with the fix and flip because of the housing market cycles, sometimes with just your home equity line of credit, um, you're either got the compound interest working for you or against you. So there's a lot of cycles within cycles and those are things I just wanna bring up to you today. And so it's something to think about. Think about assets versus liability. Think about working capital. Think about if there's intrinsic value with the asset. Think about if the asset like a rental property is creating cash flow. Is the economy gonna affect that very much? Are the demographic shifts gonna affect that very much? I would say no, because people need a place to live, no matter what happens to the demographics. I've read two articles in back-to-back -back days that say that baby boomers are now uh, a couple of the biggest, or one of the biggest demographics of uh, rental properties now. And some argue whether it's gonna be inexpensive or more expensive luxury living, depending on the markets. But that is uh, something to keep in mind as well. But People are always going to need um, those kind of cash flowing assets. So something to keep in mind is the asset that you're holding prone to go down 30% or 50% overnight if there is a sudden change in supply and demand or if interest rates go up or anything like that. So that's what I got for you today. I'll catch you later. Thank you.